in the session. Oh, lovely. Uh, Dr. Ashik, you're on. Uh, yeah, hello. We are uh, TAC 2017 team from SK Hospital. A very good morning to one and all. We go with the patient case history. It's a 67-year-old male patient with a bilateral knee joint pain for the past five years. His right total knee arthroplasty was done in 11th December 2013. Now his symptoms on the left knee. On examination, there is tenderness over the medial joint line. He has a range of 0 to 100 degrees. At least. So that is the x-ray with a post-TKR on the right knee, PS knee, and the grade 3 osteoarthritis on the left side. Keep the x-ray, please, Anand. Yes, sir. I'll keep the x-ray. Over on. to uh, Dr. Manish. Uh, Dr. Tapasvi, another two minutes. Dr. Yeah, Manish yeah, sure. is just about getting ready, sir. Okay, fine. Yeah. Okay, we're going live with Dr. Manish. Dr. Yeah. Manish, you're on to the auditorium, sir. <coughs> Good morning and sorry for the delay. Yeah. Then we had an issue with the nav machine. Yeah. And we could not get the ASM going. Now we have. Luckily, Sahil from Delhi managed. Hello, I, I, I yeah. can't hear you. Yes, yes, we can hear you very well. You can please start, please. Okay. Uh, with the knee inflection. Uh, can you brief us on the system that you're going to be using, please? Uh, we are using the Striker ASM navigation. Okay. What does the ASL stand for? Uh, it's articular surface mounted. Okay. So we will not be putting in uh, additional pins for trackers. Okay. So it's a kind of pinless system. All right. So what was it that we were trying to do before you got started? So uh, do you do a registration of the hip and the ankle before you get started with the incision? No. All right. Uh, with this system, because the trackers come on after opening. Okay. And you need to place them over the uh, articular surface. Okay. It's not possible to start off earlier than that. Yes, what we do is we need to kind of uh, register uh, or activate the trackers and the pointers. Right. So that is what we did. Okay. We put the, uh, can I have the trackers please? Sir, 
So I can see that you're uh, exposing the medial side, you're taking off the fascia yeah. over the vastus medialis. So am I to presume that you're going to bring a subvastus? Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, in literature there's not much to differentiate between any of the approaches in the long term. Yeah, that's true, but significant, uh, there's been a lot shown that there's a lot of difference in the early sort of post-op phase in the first three weeks with respect to return to function as well as the pain scores yeah. and uh, definitely the subvastus or the midvastus uh, score over the medial parapetal approach as regards this aspect. The other thing I think which is very important is the incidence of lateral releases is significantly less when you do a quad sparing approach such as the subvastus or the midvastus. So can you please tell us your landmarks as to how far over the medial intramuscular septum do you go, how proximal do you go, what is the limit of your dissection on the medial side? Yeah. Uh, can I have a, yeah. As you can see, the most important thing as far as the subvastus goes is getting to this plane. Ensuring that, this off, yeah. You are deep to the deep fascia. Okay. You do not take the fascia uh, along with the muscle. Okay. So it's, once you get to this plane, then the dissection is fairly simple. Uh, yeah. And then, <coughs> so I, I go all the way medial. Okay. Uh, it's, it's a kind of pure subvastus. It's not a midvastus yeah. or... Then, on the lateral side, I normally do not touch. All right. Unless it's a very obese patient. Okay. In which case, I need to create a small pouch on which I reflect the uh, yeah. patella. Okay. This is my tibial tuberosity. Okay. This is the medial border of the patella. Yeah, please. So, this is the incision that I'm going to take. Perfect. Second knife, please. So I think for the benefit of all of you who want to do a subvastus, uh, the only possible limitation proximally is the presence of what is called as a supreme geniculate artery, which is roughly about seven and a half, sorry, six and a half centimeters proximal to the joint line on the medial side. And uh, that can be a troublesome bleeder if you're not careful with it. Also in patients who are quite obese and in patients with a valgus deformity, and in patients uh, who have uh, had previous surgery. So in a revision situation, try and avoid to do a subvastus. It may not be the best time that you want to do your subvastus for the first time. So he's incising the synovium now, and I think that's very important because unless and until you make an incision in the synovium, it is quite difficult to then slide the whole extensor apparatus laterally, uh, which is of paramount importance. What percentage of your knees would you be operating through the subvastus approach? When I started, it was like uh, 50, but now it's almost 100. And do you... Uh, it, it does have a small learning curve. Yes. And uh, like I said, the most important aspect yeah. is getting the plane right. Yeah. Because the only thing that worries you here is the size of the flap yeah. and uh, issues with the wound. Okay. So to all those who are starting off with subvastus, I can assure you that it gives excellent exposure the only issue is that you need to be in the right plane. So th that uh, you need to be a little careful about, but once that is done, rest just falls in place. Because this is a virus knee, uh, uh, as a part of my exposure, I'm going to do a part of the medial release. So how far <coughs> distal do you carry your exposure on the medial side? Yeah, uh, I'll come to that in a minute. Yeah. 
So one can see that he's done a good subperiosteal exposure, uh, and right down yeah. to expose the fibers. And this is the tibial tuberosity. Yeah. So uh, I've left the attachment of the su uh, superficial co medial collateral intact. I'm re releasing a little on the lateral side. Yeah. Okay, and one can very nicely observe that even with a subvastus approach, he is able to evert the patella if he needs to do a patellar preparation and subluxation of the patella is never a problem. Yeah. Nope. I'll need to go a little more proximal. First knife, please. It's slightly tight, first knife. And like one of my teachers always used to say that the skin heals side by side. So I'm never afraid of extending the incision a little just so that I can get adequate exposure. Yep, now we are ready to go. So as you can see, even with the sub vastus, yeah the exposure is never compromised. Yeah. A little bit of joint debridement. Is the table at the lowest height or can it go a little lower? You're going to be doing a CR knee or a PS knee? Uh, we are doing a PS, NRG PS. Okay, now we can see you've uh, yep. <laughs> removed the PCL. So the ACL was intact and I think this patient has got anteromedial osteoarthritis. So the patient uh, has anteromedial osteoarthritis with, is, with a, small uh, a significant amount of patellofemoral arthritis. Disease. Yes. And a, a small, small linear ulcer on the lateral side as well. Yep. Yeah. <coughs> How satisfied is he with his other knee? Uh, I guess the reason that he has come in for this uh, speaks for itself. But he... So with the uh, current navigation system that you're going to be using now, uh, all the releases and the exposure is done first and then you put on your trackers, right? Yes, sir. So is there a way of knowing wha what was the degree of deformity actually? So this navigation I think will not allow you to calculate the degree of deformity, right? Yes. This it was will. with the other systems. Yes, that, that's the full system. Okay. Uh, precision. Precision, yeah. The express is uh, a method wherein you get all other information okay. that you need. All right. Uh, before uh, you plunge into computer navigation, yes, it, it's important to understand that it is an assistant. It doesn't do the surgery for you. And which are the places where you need assistance? So what, how far has been your journey with navigation? For how many years now? Uh, since, I guess, 2007. Okay the last 10 years now almost. Yep. And you would say that gradually now almost all your cases are navigated or you choose and have your own discretion as to when to use and when not to use? Uh, I prefer to do all my cases navigated unless I'm working in a place wherein there is no navigation. Exactly. Because I've always found it to be a very good adjunct to my clinical decisions. So I think for the benefit of all of us, can you tell me as to in what way navigation has helped your clinical practice? Uh, it's helped improve my results. Okay. 
And I guess that's the only way your practice can improve. So, yes, uh, I do not view it as an, a marketing tool. And to all those who use it as a marketing tool, I can or want to get into navigation for the use of it as a marketing tool, I can assure you that after a couple of years, you'll stop using it. Okay. I guess we are good to go. We have been able to achieve, can you see this? Yep. We've I can see that your deformity is now corrected. Yep. The varus is corrected and the leg is now almost in neutral, right? Yeah. So now I'm ready to go. Okay. Okay. Could you just push it a little on this side? Thank you. So this is the left knee, right? Yeah, this is the left knee. And you're standing on the right side. Uh, I have this bad habit. Okay, that's I interesting. So here's a surgeon who's standing on the right side because he's right-handed for a left knee. Most of us would stand on the left side for a left knee. Yeah. But that's really nice. <laughs> so uh, now this is the surf articular surface mounting. Okay. And this is the femur tracker. All right. So do you need to activate them before? Yes, we do need to activate them before and maybe, okay. Uh, can you see the? Okay. Anand, show us the navigation screen half and okay. half. Yeah, yeah, good. Yeah. So you can see that this has three LED lights. Yeah. Which send signal to the camera up there. Okay. Hence, it's a kind of two-way communication. Okay. Yeah. I attach the femoral tracker onto the femoral articular surface. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So is it essential to not remove the osteophytes or you can remove the no. osteophytes? Uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, okay. So, you know, like. Okay. So three the pins? fixation with four pins, four pins okay. is phenomenal. All right. Because they go, two go vertically, I mean, uh, direct bang on in 90 degrees. And two are and convergent. Two are at uh, an angle, yeah. yeah. And it's very, very important to check this stability. All right. Any problems with osteoporotic bone? Uh, so far, none. Okay. Because with four pins in there, even in an osteoporotic bone, we get phenomenal fixation. Perfect. Plus, because it's directly mounted onto the articular surface, yeah. even with movements, yeah. there is nothing which is coming in the way. Okay. Okay. So, uh, we are good to start with registering our points. The hip inflection is a static uh, landmark. Okay. So, with hip in about uh, 40, 50 degrees of flexion, yeah. that's a static landmark. Okay. The most important landmark is the hip center. All right. Most navigation systems will use circumduction of the hip All right. for registering. And it's very important. It's still not coming on. Uh, the femur, wow. It has to happen right away. Uh, if you look at the uh, left bottom of the screen, okay. it tells you that the battery on the femur tracker has gone. So, I'm removing the battery okay. and putting on another new Fresh shift. battery. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, this is a slow movement Does, without… You get someone to stabilize the pelvis for you? Yeah, without rocking the pelvis. Okay. And if you are able to do it in just two circles, which means that the pelvis hasn't rocked too much. Okay. And it has been able to calculate the center of the hip very Perfect. precisely. Perfect. The precision normally is about 1.34 mm. 
Okay. So it's very, very precise. Then we move to the medial epicondyle. All right. The lateral one, luckily, male patient with not too, uh, I mean, fairly good bony prominences. But occasionally that epicondylar registration can be a challenge. So can, what's, what's can your... Can I have uh, the ambient lights off for a minute? What's your secret for having perfect registration? I mean, what different tip will you give us to register the landmarks properly? Uh, Sachin, can I come back for that? Yeah, yeah, please do. Yeah. Please do, yeah. Uh, femur AP axis, it's the white side line. Yeah. And, okay, I, I like looking at that. It tells me, uh, look at the bottom of the, on the left hand side. Yeah, one it, degree external rotation. Yes, yes, we can read that. Yeah. It's one degree external rotation of AP axis yeah. to the trans epicondylar axis. Okay. So, normally we know that the trans apicondylar axis and the AP axis are at 90 degrees to each other. Correct. When it tells me one degree of external rotation, yeah. which means that the points that I registered yeah. for the medial and the lateral epicondyle yeah. are more or less in Accurate. that right zone. Correct. If I'm getting an external rotation or an internal rotation of yeah. more than four or five degrees, okay. then I know that either my AP axis is off. Okay or my registration of the medial and the lateral epicondyles are off. Okay. So it's important to know that whichever point you register, if you go wrong with it, what will it affect in the calculations later? Now moving on to the anterior cortex. We normally aim to hit the highest point on the lateral cortex where the implant is going to touch the lateral femoral cortex. Here I ensure that the pointer doesn't go off in the air so I do not register any air points. These points will give me the depth of cut. So if my depth of cut is off I know that the, I mean, if this registration was a little off, the depth of cuts will not be true. Medial posterior. Okay. It tells me that the AP distance is 67. With the system I'm using, that is the striker NRG, I know that the AP uh, of size 7 is 61 and the AP diameter of size 9 is 65. This is 67. Size 11 is 71. So I know that I'll need to be moving to size 9. I'll be downsizing the femur by 2 mm. And because of that, I'm going to put this femur in a V bit flexion to accommodate for that 2 mm. Uh, was that clear or? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Oops. Okay. Zero. In terms of varus valgus, this is with reference to the HK. Yeah. This is not with reference to the uh, intramedullary axis. Yeah. And the depth of cut tells me three and five. Yeah. I'm going to push it up because my implant thickness is eight mm. Yes. And a male patient. Yeah. Wherein I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to cheat a little in downsizing. Okay. And that is why I'm going to go one mm more on the uh, extension cut. Okay. Pin. So, so the implant thickness is eight mm, is it? Yeah. With okay. striker, it's eight mm. All right. 
So you want to be you want to be eight mm off the good side or eight mm off the eight mm off the good side. Good side, yeah. yeah. Pin. Yeah. Center. If you look at the figures out on the screen, they'll yes. keep on changing as he drills it in. Yeah. I'm not too worried on that front. Yeah. Uh, bicortical. Bicortical. I'll allow him to fix one pin first. Yeah. And then do a fine tuning. Yeah. Yeah. Good. So, yeah. Done. The battery on the helmet is going. Nope. zone that I want it to be in. Yes. No, 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 this one. Yeah. Now you got a cross pin in for fixation. Yeah. Done. Now because this is articular surface mounted, we yeah. need to remove this. Angel wings. So with this system, do you always do femur first, or you can do you can customize your you you, you can customize it yeah. to femur first or tibia first. Okay. I think my cut is coming a little on the lesser side. Yeah. So maybe the registration of the points uh -huh. was not too good in terms of the medial and the lateral distal femur. Okay. So what I'm going to do is, can I have the pin? I'm going to take plus two right away. Angel wings. Yep. yep, I think I'm going. Okay. So. So line. Measure off. So, can you validate your cut uh, with the system, or you can't? Yes, you can. Okay. The issue is normally I validate it by measuring the uh, resected bone. Oh, I see. Okay. It but gives I'm me a good enough uh, check and pin puller. Uh, remove these two first. Remove these two first. Yep. Mm -hmm. 
okay. There's a small bit of bone here. Can I have the saw? So I think with the precision system, you could uh, validate the cut with this. You can't, is it? Uh, you can. Okay, so you can place the tracker back on the cut surface yeah. of the bone? Okay. But if my resected bone, yeah. I haven't even like uh, used a okay. saw or uh, I've taken two kind of cuts, yeah. then I know that uh, this thickness yeah. is going to correspond to what I resected or yeah. what was shown on the screen, then should not be an issue. What was that? The thickness? Calipers? To measure, please. We now move on to the TBL side. Yeah. TBL forwards. Flex. Can we move to the next screen? Wait a minute. Could you give me the pointer, please? The other advantage of this system is I don't need anyone at the back there. I can move this one. Okay. Now, it tells me that for the femur, I need to put the uh, femoral component in two degrees of external rotation. We had a one degree error in between registration of the transapicondylar axis and the AP axis. So it tells me that the AP is three degree internally rotated and the transapicondylar axis is one degree. That is how it averaged it out to two degrees of internal rotation. And it tells me to put the component in two degrees of external rotation. Maybe I'll go with the standard three degrees because my AP axis registration was perfect and that tells me that the AP axis was three degrees internal rotated and hence I'm going to follow the AP axis. Is that clear? Yeah, that's fine. <coughs> TBR tracker. The same attachment that we used for the femur is being used for the tibia on the Once again, the same principles, all four pins. Done. Pointer. Can I have the lights off, please? The ambient light here is good, and that's why I need to switch them off. Otherwise, they can interfere with my navigation. Off, off. Yeah, thanks. TBI center, TBI AP axis. Here I like to see that, can I have the cautery? This is the intercondylar axis uh, and this is where it exits. It's almost on the medial border of the TBL tuberosity, not on the uh, one third. All right. Yeah.
So now you'll take the lowest points on the medial side. Uh, with almost all navigation systems, yeah. the calculation is from the highest point. Okay. So you need to be a little careful on that. All right. That you do not uh, map the lowest points. Otherwise, you will end up with a cut which is almost impossible to okay, okay. close. No, no, no. Oh, sorry. This needs to go off like that. Yeah. Can you? Where is the attachment? So, so essentially you have a green tracker and a blue tracker and they are used uh, alternatingly, is it? Exactly. They yeah. are in interchangeably used. And then the third tracker is your static uh, tracker which is on the pointer gun. Uh -huh. Lights. Can you switch off the lights for the moment? Yeah. So Manish, when you uh, sort of, uh, when you uh, fine tune this cutting jig on the femoral side as well as on the tibial side, yes. what is the first thing that you'll want to do? I mean, you've got three variables. You've got the depth, you've got the slope, you've got the varus valgus. Huh. So, you know, just for all of us who are not using navigation, so what is the first thing that you'll adjust? So say first I'll do the varus valgus, then I'll go to the slope, then I'll go to the depth. So what's the, what's the scheme of adjustments in this? Uh, normally, I adjust the slope first okay, and then move on to the varus valgus. All right. And depth goes last? Yeah. Even for the femur the same way? Uh, same way. Flexion same way. first, then varus valgus and then resection depth. Yeah. Uh, with the femur, the issue is that you are not going to be very off. In the sense, maybe 2 degrees of flexion, 1 or 2 degrees of varus depending on the size of the thigh. Yeah. So that is not going to be affecting so much. Okay. But with the tibia what happens is that you might be zero on varus valgus. Okay. But you will put in some amount of slope. All right. Why did I put in four here? Because there is a three degree in inbuilt slope in the poly. Okay. Okay. And I put my distal, uh, I mean the lateral resection as six because yeah. that is from the highest point. Okay. So I'm presuming that it's going to turn out to be around about eight. Oh, is that right? Okay. Also, I noticed that uh, for having the articular tracker on the TBS set down, is it always necessary to evert the patella? Uh, no. It isn't? It isn't. All right. Uh, this was just for demonstration that uh, it's fairly easy to do it. Okay. And it doesn't compromise on the exposure. Okay. Most people are afraid of the subvastus is because of compromise on the exposure. And as you can see at this point in time, yeah. it gives me almost the same exposure as a routine. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. No, I'll drop down. So you're doing a plus two or a minus two now? Plus two. Okay. Good. Please.
I'm using the cut as a slot now. Can we have the extension space, please? Yeah. Ten. So is the role of the navigation over now? Uh, yes, but we'll be using information that we've uh, gathered so far. Okay. So I, I guess my extension space looks good. But I think you still have to remove the osteophytes, right? Yeah. On yeah. the medial side. Yeah. yeah. So that'll give me some more space. Sizer. We knew that this was going to be between 9 and 11. Okay. And that is what it tells us. That it's between 9 and 11. Okay. Can you read off that? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that a little bit of flexion helped. Yeah. Now we're going to cheat a little more. So I'll need an 11 bushing. Uh, with the striker system, what happens is that as I upsize from, uh, I mean, I put in an 11 bushing, as you okay. can see here. Okay. And I'll pin it with an 11 bushing. So can you not change the... Yes, you can. Uh, the jig to plus 2 or minus 2? You can. Yeah. There is here... Yeah. But if I want to go just plus one, okay. the advantage with this is that because I know the system, okay. when it drops down from 11 to 9, yeah. it's going to take equally of the interior and the posterior cortex. I see. Okay. So, so I know that I just need to go that 1 mm more. Okay. So you're sort of sharing it between the anterior and the posterior cortex. Exactly. Cuts. Yeah. Uh, can I have two more pins, please? Yeah. Now, as you can see here, this is the point, once again, I want to cross-check. My rotations are right. So, yes, looks good. Yeah. And it matches well with my TBL cut. So yes. I, I'm looking at all parameters uh, before finalizing on my cut. True. Yeah, off. Nine. The 9 AP also, I mean, medial lateral also looks good. Can I have the angel wings again, please? Yeah. I'm sorry? No, he kept it at 0 and because he, took, he was probably a size 10, so he used the setting for, uh, he used 11 bushing in, so that it took off 1 millimeter from the anterior and 1 millimeter from the posterior. So he didn't have to change the plus to minus 2. Yeah, so that's the other thing you could have done. Normally, I uh, take the anterior chamfer first. Okay. 
uh, if the camera can come in from the side, okay, it gives me that small amount of play. Okay, yeah, I got it, yes. So that I am sure that I am not. Now you can come up from the top again. And I have a good grand piano sign there. Osteotum, please. And protect the collaterals. Please. Notch. Box cut. Size nine. So, as you can see, I use uh, navigation as an adjunct. I use all the information that it gives me. Yeah. Both in terms of rotations, in terms of sizing. But at the same time, I do not allow it to stop my thinking process. Because I, I basically dislike a system which tells me just keep on rotating it or keep on flexing it. I want to know the values, I want to. box. The other thing is, and as I place the box, if my pins are more or less in the center, not up or down, it can be mediolaterally, that's fine, but not up or down. Okay. If they are in the center, I know that my cut has been properly taken. I haven't kind of skived off too much. Nope, 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 nope. It's off. Here. Yeah. Better. Now. Tiani, can you use this one? Yeah. Good. So, pr protection. Osteotome. Nope. The saw just died. Luckily, I am at a stage wherein I can use any saw.
nibbler. Is this a very conservative box cut? Yeah, this is one of the most conservative box cuts that you get. Oops. Wings. Can I have a small osteotome, please? Can I have a smaller nibbler? Yeah, done. It impacts the remaining bone inside. Yeah. So, yeah, I think we're good. Can I have the trial? Nine femur, 70 wear. I haven't prepared the tibia as yet because I'm waiting for my tibial rotations. Okay. Nine left. Good. Lug holes. Give me an 8 insert, 7 by 8. need to go 10. Finally, it's going to be like 12. Once we remove all this, it's going to be 12. But the rotation is right. Right here. So this is where it was coming. Mm -hmm. And it's at the medial edge. Okay. It's not at the medial one-third. So that lines up with your tibial AP axis, correct? Yes. Yeah. Because quite often, we end up putting it uh, more externally rotated for the fear of internally rotating it. Yeah. Lateral collateral. 
flex, 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 flex. Yeah. The meniscus still remains. I'll need to take the saw. That is what was popping it out. So I guess with a 7 we are good, the rotation besides our mark, we are going to look at the curve on the curve, the lateral side the curve matches, the medial side the curve matches, there is more bone posteriorly on the medial side than on the lateral side. Any specific reason why you left removal of osteophytes at the very end? Occasionally if I want to uh, upsize the tibia and place it on the osteophytes, uh, it gives me that extra bone. Because with this system, I can go only uh, plus 2, minus 2. Okay. So, it leaves me with that advantage that if I want to increase my tibial size, I can use the osteophytes. Rasp. And if I'm going to do this anyways at the end, it kind of prevents repetition of the step. In a very sclerose bone like this, I prefer making a few drill holes okay. to prevent fractures. simple pin puller there though.
no, no. Why do I put it back? Because when I try and remove this, I don't want any of those pins falling inside. Okay. Nibbler, nibbler. Yeah, done. Drilled. Final trial with 12. Twelve, twelve, twelve. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I have good flexion. Decent patella tracking. Can we prepare the patella? So, so for cementing, you change sides, is it? Sorry? For cementing, you change sides now? No. <laughs> for the patella, I change sides. Oh, okay, okay. Patella, I find it a little difficult to do it from that side. Not with the finger, not with the finger. Okay. Rasp. One file. I guess my glove is torn, but at the right time, I need to be changing. Okay, done. Remove. We'll just need to go and look at it posteriorly for that posterior osteophytes, which we had banged up. Okay. Nibbler. And osteophyte nibbler. Mm -hmm. 
I like this one because okay yeah this gives me that access posteriorly flex is this one of your special instruments uh, yeah but to the lateral meniscus as well i think think we are there you have removed everything that needs to be removed there is an osteophyte in there yeah done we are good okay wash nine left femur seven pa uh, and seven twelve cocktail sorry cocktail hmm yeah prefer that it's okay no one does so what are the sites that you'll inject with this uh, with the injection oh, now flex 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 mainly on the postromedial femur and on the postromedial tibia okay because that is where the pain is generally coming from then the capsule yes not too much on the lateral side and this much i'll leave for the interior new pair of gloves for me so is it one mix of cement or two mixes of cement uh with a 97 i generally go with a single mix of cement okay if it's 99 yeah then it's two why is that because the, that uh, the surface surface is quite large yeah are there any concerns where you have a slightly larger sized femur and a under smaller sized tibia uh with this design i haven't had issues okay i normally go tibia first aha uh -huh. mix palacos so you'd be happy to have the insert open right now as well yeah unless uh, i have removed too much of the posterior side in which case i'll not open the insert flex ready lavaj 
not happy here. Suction, suction. Artery. Show me the entire, yeah. yeah. Are we ready? Forceps, artery, dry. Poly. Yep, good to go. Hammer, extend.
Okay. Tony, get off. Uh, Dr. Kailash? Yeah, he's here. What message? Uh, Dr. Tapasvi, I guess we are done over here, right? Yep. So I think a couple of very interesting things that I saw right now. You put okay. the poly on first before you put the femur in. Any specific reason why you did that? Uh, it gives me the best uh, or the most clean tibial tray that okay. I would get. All right. Uh, and uh, you had any problems with having cement extruding at the back of the knee, etc.? Uh, normally with uh, cement like Palacos, yeah? uh, that's not s an issue. Okay. Yes, if I was going with some other cement, I would be a little worried in which case I might not do that. All right. And um, you let down the tonique before the cement set. Does that any, in any way interfere with your cement bonding? Uh, uh, I laid it down maybe about six, seven minutes into the... Okay, and that's good enough. You don't yeah. need not wait till the cement sets completely. Exactly. Okay, so. that's great. So what, what are your tips for closure and uh, further uh, rehab? Is it any different? Or you just let the patient be off, you know, get off the bed and sit... Uh, uh, do bed norm sit normally I do not tomorrow. put drains. Okay. So uh, we normally allow the patient to get off the bed on the evening of surgery. Yeah and uh, take a few steps or maybe walk depending on the uh, patient uh, overall physical fitness. Okay. And uh, local tranexamic acid, etc. your thoughts on the same? Uh, yes. Uh, I, uh, as you saw me inject that cocktail, yeah. that does include uh, local tranexamic, tranexamic acid. acid as well. Okay. Any so questions, please, from Kailash, you want to make any comments? Yeah. Kailash is, wants to make some sure, comments. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Uh, sir, just a second, sir. Sorry, sorry. Appa, give sir a mic which we can hear. Some of those mics don't come to us. Give sir a mic that we can hear, please. Dr. Manish, can you hear me now? Yes, very loud and clear. Hi, Manish. Thanks. It's a very good uh, presentation. One doubt. Uh, see, you've uh, based it out of the hip joint. Your navigation is based out of the hip joint, okay? Your reference off the hip joint. Yes. What if he has an arthrodes hip or a hugely osteoarthritic uh, hip? Then are you okay to go ahead with the navigation for the knee? Uh, if it's a hugely arthritic hip and he does not have range of motion in the hip, you cannot use any sort of navigation because all navigation uh, will find the hip center by circumducting the hip. Be it escalate, be it... Uh, Depu, be it brain labs, be it uh, Medtronics. All of them reference the hip center by circumduction of the hip. And unless you find the hip center, it's uh, not possible to find out the mechanical axis. Okay, so it's mandatory that he has a normal hip to go ahead with navigation. Is uh, that true? He has a decent range of motion in the hip. He does not need to have a normal hip. And anyways, if he has a grossly arthritic hip, Probably I would address the hip first before uh, addressing the knee. Okay, one more question, sir. Uh, regarding the, your protocol of taking the osteophytes later, it's been addressed by surgeon. But again, uh, you might get your, your bone cuts correct, but your balancing might alter if you do not do your osteophytes in advance. Don't you think so? Uh, my gross balancing in the initial stage might be affected, but because uh, I'm like measuring my cuts so I know that a part of my balancing is coming in from my measured resection and the fine tuning of that balancing comes in uh, towards the end when I remove all the osteophytes. Okay, thank you sir. So I, I would not walk out of the theatre without removing the osteophytes uh, or you know, like your final balancing cannot be done without removal of the osteophytes. The reason why I leave them on is that occasionally you might need to upsize the tibia. Let's say with the striker system, uh, if there is an eight femur, 
and uh, you're coming to a six tibia, the eight femur will force you to use a seven tibia. In which case, leaving that small bit of an osteophyte on which you can place the tibial tray is an additional bonus. Okay. One other thing that I've noticed is you are very precise about your AP diameter. <laughs> It's, is it because you're using only the striker instrumentation? Because we tend to use a lot of uh, different companies for our surgeries. You have been very precise with the AP diameter for your prosthesis and things like that. So you are... No, no, no. I, I do the same whether I'm using striker, whether I'm using Zimmer, whether I'm using uh, Smith & Nephew. Uh, the thing is that in my OR, I normally have a chart which says that uh, the AP sizing of uh, Smith & Nephew is this. Uh, Depu is this, uh, Zimmer is this, and Stryker is this. Uh, we've been doing it for a fair bit of time, so you know, like, we, I know that if it's a Zimmer, uh, size D is 58, and size C is 54, and size E is 62. So it, it's basically uh, remembering just a few sizes, but then if you've been doing it for a while, uh, you remember them off the cuff. Thank you so much. Thanks. There's, there are a few more questions, sir. Thanks. Yes, please. Even after removal of the tibial osteophytes, uh, your, uh, the size 7 seems to be undersized. Uh, you, f f uh, you could have tried for the 8. Uh, at least uh, you must sure you tried for 8, but you, you didn't go for 8 directly. No. You gone no. for 7. No, no. Uh, the, uh, with uh, striker, you have size 9 tibia and a size 7 tibia. Oh, that's why you planned uh, a, a, At least in my part of the world. Uh, I'm not sure if your striker is supplying size 8 tibia. Oh. It doesn't. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, Manish, I think uh, we'll uh, thank you for your excellent surgical demonstration. Okay, thank you so Thanks. much. Thanks. Thank you, Dr.